Haleakala National Park takes up much of the land on the central and eastern part of Maui and I wanted to make this video to give you tips on how to best explore it. The national park encompasses a 10,000 foot volcanic crater with an observatory right at the top and over 30,000 acres of land that lead all the way down to the ocean on the island's east side. I visited both sections of the park over two days and you can see that in the videos I made on the sliding sands trail and road to Hana, but let's jump into some of my tips on how to make the most of your time in Haleakala National Park. First up, the Summit District is the easiest to access from central Maui and it's popular for its scenic drive and its many lookouts and trails. The district also has the observatory at the top and there are tours that will take you from central Maui to the summit if you don't want to drive. The most popular trail here is the Sliding Sands Trail, but more on that later. Next up, the coastal portion of this park is most often visited on a road to Hana road trip. After passing Hana, most people will continue all the way to the Seven Sacred Pools and the PPY Trail, which are both part of Haleakala National Park. This area has a visitor center, a parking lot, and access to both trails, but not a lot else to see. To drive from central Maui up to the summit of Haleakala, it takes about an hour and a half and it's a very windy uphill road the entire way. Getting to the coastal district is along the Hana Highway and without stopping at all, it's going to take you at least three hours to drive there. This road is very windy and narrow with lots of sections that only allow one car to pass at a time. It's a beautiful drive and one of the best I've done in a long time, so definitely check out the road trip I did along the road to Hana in the description. Next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about weather. It's hard to plan for weather here as the mountain basically makes its own weather. I've had days where I've been in Maui and you can see the mountain all day and other days where the clouds cover it and you can't see it at all. When you're up on the mountain, you'll often go in and out of clouds as you drive up and you'll have the sun for five minutes and then rain for five minutes. On my last trip, I went up for sunrise and it was all fogged in. Then two hours later, I hiked the sliding sands trail without many clouds in the sky. The coastal district often has rain as well since it's a rainforest type climate at the bottom of the mountain. Basically just be prepared for anything and know that sunrise or sunset is never a guarantee. National Park Service does have a webcam on their website so you can see what the weather is like before you drive up. In terms of cell phone reception, it's very limited in Haleakala National Park. We had a little bit of reception while we were in the summit district at some of the lookouts, but none while hiking down into the crater on the sliding sands trail. While we were at the coastal district, we didn't have any reception the entire time we were there. Speaking of sunrise, if you want to experience it from the top of the mountain, you definitely need to get a reservation in advance. These reservations normally come out two months in advance with a small portion being released two days prior, but be sure to double check as that does change. During busy times like the summer, weekends, and holidays, these reservations can sell out immediately. Remember that if you want to see the sunrise, you need to leave at least two hours before it's supposed to happen if you're coming from central Maui. We got in traffic near the entrance to the park where they check your reservation, and we probably would have missed the sunrise had it have been clear when we were there. Plus, it's often packed at the top with tour groups and lots of other people, so get there early so you can get your spot. All right, now a few comments on the park's most popular hiking trails. First up, the Sliding Sands Trail is the most popular in the Summit District. This trail takes you from the visitor center all the way down to the crater 3,000 feet below you. It's an amazing trail and I have a full video on it. That being said, it's very tough. People often look at the mileage and think that six to eight miles round trip, depending on where you stop, is not that bad. But they misjudge that you have to descend and ascend over 3,000 feet, which is very tough. Add to that the lack of any shade on the trail at all, and when it's hot, it's something you definitely don't want to take lightly. You can go to an overlook at about one mile into the trail and less than a thousand feet of elevation, so that's an option if you want to hike down but don't want to go all the way to the bottom. Lastly, you can hike all the way down through the crater on a long one-way trail that's 12 miles. If you want to do this, you need to have two cars to shuttle in between the two or use the park's hitchhiking area. This is the way that we did the Sliding Sands Trail when we were in the park, and you can see the full video in the description.
Next up in the coastal portion, the PPY trail is the most popular. If you're there, you definitely want to do the seven sacred pools as well, but that trail is only a half mile, so it doesn't require much comment from me. The PPY trail is four miles round trip with 900 feet of elevation. It's relatively steep in some sections with uneven footing from the roots, but it's not too bad if you take your time. This trail is amazing with multiple waterfalls and an extensive bamboo forest. It's one of my favorite national park trails I've ever done. That's it for my tips on visiting Haleakala National Park. Hopefully it helps you to plan your trip if you're going to experience this beautiful area. Let me know what I left off in the comments and if you have any other questions and we will see you on the next video.